trying to find your happiness this winter? Let Fiji Airways fly you there direct. Whether you're sunbathing or snorkeling, dining or dreaming, you'll experience legendary Fijian hospitality. Expect the warmest of welcomes in this Pacific paradise. Unplug, unwind, and relax in your happy place. Fiji. Get great deals on direct flights to happiness at FijiAirways.com. That's FijiAirways.com. You deserve this. Go from here to happiness. Flying direct with Fiji Airways. Homsetti's particular obsession is this temple at Abydos. She firmly believes she lived here in a previous existence more than 3,000 years ago. There's one odd story. When I was three years old, I heard an story. And it was not unconscious. And I thought, well, that's a bit odd. To examine me very carefully, said I was dead. And as I was the one and only, and the apple of my mother's eye, I mean, she went off the deep end and everybody was fussing around her. I was left in my room lying in the bed. And then the doctor said he'd return in an hour with a nurse to wash the body and the death certificate. Which he did. When he came back from the nurse and went into my room, the dead body was sitting on the bed, flowing from the mother. I dreamt about it not as a ruin, but as a going concern. But it wasn't until I was about six. I saw a photograph of this temple in a magazine, but of course, as it is, I knew it. Once I recognized this place, this was the place where I was dreaming of, and it was my home. Of the mummy of Queen Sophie. I knew that man was a nice man, good kind man. Of course, I was sure that I never did know him. And of course, when my father explained to me about what the temple was and where it was, when that explained to me why I wanted to go there and live with him, because where I am, or I went where it was. in Corpus Christi, Texas, and you're listening to the Alien Strand Podcast with 
Donald Ledesma. Buying or selling, visit me at kellygreenrealtor.com or visit me on my Facebook page, Kelly Green Realtor. See you there. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Alien Strand Podcast. I'm your host, Donald Ledesma, and welcome to today's show. It's going to be another great one, that's for sure. But before we get going, I just want to welcome everybody to Alien Strand Podcast. You can find us on 24, 25, now 26 platforms. Yeah, we're growing. We're growing every day. And I just want to thank everybody for that, for listening to the show, sharing it out there, getting it out to your friends, and just passing the information along because that's what Alien Strand is all about. It's about the information, right? And, uh, and, you know, you can catch us on Tumblr, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and Alienstrand.com. I just updated a little bit of Alienstrand.com there. So if you want to go check out the page there, very interesting stuff there. Uh, You know, it just shows uh, pictures of a lot of aliens, UFOs. Uh, There's a a whole segment on Bigfoot there. And, you know, of course, if you want to report a UFO, it's there on the first front page. And, you know, uh, if... You want to see who the team members uh, Right now it's myself and Terry Lynch You know as far as the Alien Strand team And we're growing every day But if you want to just check us out there Again if you want to be on the show You can just call 361-245-8000 Again it's 361-245-8000 If you want to be a guest on the show You got stories, anything, an abduction uh, Bigfoot encounter uh, uh, any, Anything, aliens, paranormal You give us a call and we'll get you on the show, right? You want to get some stories out there. So, um, you know, and we've had some past uh, really, really good podcasts. These are these past ones that just passed us by, right? And, uh, you know, the one that I had before this one was number 72, right? And that was uh, the alien implant. So I did a really big, uh, kind of lengthy um story about alien implants and what they're all about right uh so if you want to go check that out it's a very good i got a really lot of a lot of good reviews on that one so uh and i thank you guys for that thank you paul Wilburn over there in the uk for giving me a great review on that and uh you know david alif everybody that's out there all my good friends Ani ball he really loved that story he put it out on extraterrestrial strange happenings group and of course we have terry lynch as well of course he's spreading alien strength all over the place and you know that's what it's about we all work together and you know that alien implants was a very good uh, podcast that was number 72 and then uh, number 71 the meeting that was a really good story out in brazil so if you guys have a chance go check those out and even number 70 uh, conscious contact i had uh, some guys that made a, a documentary good friends of mine and they were able to get their information there on that podcast number 70 so if you have a chance go check that out uh and we have a really nice conversation even it's even posted on youtube um so you can actually see the video of our actual uh conversation there so but you know i I just wanted to bring everybody in and just kind of welcome you to the show and uh i know i promised to get one every week but that damn flu rona you know it got us all a little bit like a little head cold and i think it's been getting everybody now you know so i'm still suffering with it just a little bit so bear with my voice and you know i'm just going to try to get the information out as best as i can today because i know i made a promise and i'm getting it out to you um like i said if you want to go to check out all our ufos and everything that i post i did actually post a really nice photo of a bigfoot or a yeti and i think that was up there in the uh in the russian area so uh and it was a huge white one i believe somebody commented on there it could possibly could be eight to nine feet tall so if you have a chance check out that photo it's a great photo uh on that bigfoot yeti or sasquatch right that's what we call them here in the states and uh of course, there's a lot of nice UFO uh, activities up in the sky. I always see, say keep your eyes in the sky, right? Keep your hands on the wheel, though. If you do spot one up there in the sky, pull over, be safe, roll down your window, take the photo or video or step out of the vehicle. Please don't do it inside of the vehicle with the glass because that always causes conflicts as far as breaking 
these things down, right? As, uh, as far as getting, uh, you know, the analyzations correct on them. We just want to make sure it's not a smear or a bug in the window or, or something reflecting off your dashboard, okay? So let's just go ahead and do that. And if you guys can please do that, be safe. And uh, please set your cameras, uh, you know, to stabilization if you can. And that way you can get a lot of those things, you know, properly set on your camera. But today is going to be a really, really good story, you know, and uh, I always want to bring out something new or something different. You know, I, I always talk about, of course, alien abductions, which is my top most. Uh, it's about 80 percent of the stories that are here on Alien Strand. And that's what I love to focus and concentrate on. Right. I do a lot of that. And, you know, it's just one of those things that um, it intrigues me a lot but I still have the other things as far as UFOs and paranormal you know uh, Bigfoot and you know things of the unknown that we just don't think about every day and that we have to get the information out to, to everybody right and that's what I'm about here you know and I was trying to get the stories out, and then I came across this story that I had heard before, but I didn't really get to get involved in it or read it as much as I did. You know, and I really, really, you know, enjoyed that the story that I read on on this person, and you know, I just thought that it was important to to get the information out uh, and her story, right? So here today, I'm going to try to get this podcast out and all the information as much as possible. And it has a lot to do, actually, with Egypt, right? And the pharaohs, right? Everything that happened around the 12th century B.C., you know, and we don't get to talk about Egypt too much here. I've, I've mentioned it one time, I believe, on, on one of my earlier podcasts. And actually, I love that subject because it has a lot of historical value, you know, to what and how people lived. And there's they were able to put all their information down as far as hieroglyphs, right? And... and they were able to get their stories out, right? And that's what intrigued a lot of people back in the day when they first, you know, when they first started to try to decipher everything, right? And then this story comes along that was kind of hidden in the background, right? That people just didn't know about as, as much. So I came across it. And today's podcast is going to be number 73. I called it Far From Home because there's a reason for it. So there was this young woman back in the day. Her name is Dorothy. Today. And to the people there in Egypt when later on she was also known as Om Seti. That's O M M S E T Y, right? Or O M S E T I. And that's what they called her. And there's a reason. There's a reason for it. And I'm going to give you her story. You heard a little bit of it at the beginning of this podcast. So she was born on J- in January 16th, 1904. She passed away on April 21st, 1981. So she was a British uh, antiques caretaker and folklorist, right? She was a keeper of the Abadeos Temple of the Seti the First and Daughters Woman for the Department of the Egyptian Antiquities.
She's also known for her belief in a previous life that she had been a priestess in ancient Egypt. And as well as her considerable historical research at Abidios. Her life and work has been a subject of many articles, television documentaries, and biographies, right? So this is what grabbed my attention. So Dorothy's earlier life, she was born in London in 1904. She was the child of Reuben Ernest A. Eddie, I'm sorry, a master tailor born in Woolrich, and Carolyn Mary, Ide, raised in a coastal town. At the and at the age of three, after falling down a flight of stairs, talking about Dorothy here, and briefly appearing to be dead, they said she had been exhibiting strange behaviors and asking that she be brought home. This is the earlier story of it, right? We'll get more into detail on that. So later, after she recovered, her parents took her to visit the British Museum on observing a photograph of the New Kingdom Temple exhibits room. At the time, Dorothy was young. She cried out, There's my home. But where are the trees, she says. Where are the gardens? The temple was of Seti I, the father of Ramses the Great. They said she ran about the halls of the Egyptian rooms. Amongst her people, she says, kissing the statue's feet. After this trip, she took the opportunity to visit the British Museum rooms. There, later, she eventually met E.A. Wallace Budge, who was taken by her youthful enthusiasm and encouraged her to study hieroglyphs, right? But right there, they noticed that she was special, right? In a sense, because she took strong interest in the Egyptian culture of the past. Later again, after a close escape from bombing raid in World War I, she moved to her grandmother's house there in Sussex. There she, she continued to study ancient Egypt at the Eastburn Public Library, right? She's doing this all on her own. When she was 15, she described a nocturnal visit from the mummy of the Pharaoh Seti I. Her behavior, coupled with sleep several times, she says. She says she was like walking nightmares. Led her to be Incarcerated in sanitariums several times. Later, she left school at 16. She would visit museums, archaeological sites around Britain, facilitated by her father. Did investigations into the nationwide booming cinema industry so that's what her father was doing right later again Dorothy became a student of the Plymouth Art School and began to collect affordable Egyptian antiquities right she was really really getting into this and um, she just couldn't get these thoughts and these nightmares at times out of her mind So it was like, in a sense, consuming her in a sense, right? 
was by the age of 16. Now, she's 27. She began working in the London Egyptian uh, Public Relations magazine. She wrote articles and drew cartoons that reflected political support for independent Egypt. During this period, she met her husband, Imam Abdel Megid, who was an Egyptian student, whom she continued to correspond when he returned home, right? She met this man. And I think that's probably where she believed that that was her way to get there. Fell in love. So in 1931, she decided to move to Egypt with her husband. By now, he's a teacher of English. When they arrived to Egypt, she kissed the ground and announced she had come home to stay. She said they stayed in Cairo and her husband's family would, uh, gave her the name Bulbul, which means Nightingale. They also had a son. She named this son Seti as well. Which is derived from the popular name Om Seti, which Om Seti, which is her name, what they gave her, means mother of Seti. After she had a chance to meet with George Reisner's secretary, who commented on her apparent ability to charm snakes and told her that spells on such powers were in ancient uh, Egyptian literature. Amseti visited the 5th dynasty pyramid of Unas. Klaus Baer recalled her piety when she accompanied him to visit Chakra in the early 1950s. There, she brought her an offering book, took her shoes off before entering the Unas Pyramid. She continued to report apparitions of out-of-body experiences during this time, which caused friction with the upper-middle-class family she was married into. So that gave her a lot of issues during her marriage because of the things she was saying. People still didn't believe of what she was saying. And this is the story, a little bit more detail on her past life, which she claims. She says she got visited by Hora. Hora is a god of kingship and the sky. Ra is a horse of two horizons. All forms of life were created by Ra. This is the Egyptian folklore back then. They said the sweat and tears is what made the people of Ra. And the people were cattle of Ra. The reason I'm mentioning Hora, because during the early period, she reported nighttime visitations by an apparition of Hora. He slowly dictated to her over a 12 month period the story of her previous life. The story took around 70 pages of cursive hieroglyphic text. 
It described the life of a young woman in ancient Egypt. I'll venture it. Who had been reincarnated in a person of Dorothy Eddy. Bensrit, which means harp of joy, is described in this text as being of a humble origin. Said her mother was a vegetable seller and her father sold, uh, was a soldier during the reign of Seti I. And the reign of Seti I was from 1290 B.C. through 1279 B.C. The story goes, when she was three, her mother died. She was placed in the temple Kham El Sutan because her father could not afford her. There, she was brought up to be a priestess. When she was 12 years old, the high priest asked her if she wished to go out into the world or stay and become a concentrated virgin. In the absence, the full understanding without a practical alternative, she took the vows. She decided to stay. During the next few years, she learned her role in the annual drama of Osiris, Passion and Resurrection. Only a role, only of a virgin priestess consecrated to Isis could perform. In other words, she's the only one that could perform this ritual. On the day of Seti the first, visited and spoke to her. Later, they became lovers, eating the uncooked goose. was an ancient Egyptian term that had been compared to eating the forbidden fruit. When Bethred became pregnant, she told the high priest who the father was. The high priest informed her that gravity of the offense against Isis was so terrible that death would be most most likely the penalty at her trial. So unwilling to face the public scandal for Seti, she committed suicide rather than face trial. And this is the story of her past life. You know, for her to give all this information on exactly who she was at the time in a past life. Trying to find your happiness this winter? Let Fiji Airways fly you there direct. Whether you're sunbathing or snorkeling, dining or dreaming, you'll experience legendary Fijian hospitality. Expect the warmest of welcomes in this specific paradise. Unplug, unwind, and relax in your happy place. Fiji. Get great deals on direct flights to happiness at FijiAirways.com. That's FijiAirways.com. You deserve this. Go from here to happiness. Flying direct with Fiji Airways. How's your money feeling? It's about to feel happier with a certificate from Happy Money's partner, Michigan State University Federal Credit Union. Elevate and increase your savings with 18-month terms and only a $500 minimum. And the happiest part? MSU FCU certificates yield 4.5% APY annual percentage yield. Now that's a happier side of money. Elevate your savings. Go to happymoney.com slash MSUFCU. That's MSUFCU. Funds insured up to 250000 by NCUA. 
The APY is accurate as of the 12-1-2023 dividend declaration date. Early withdrawal penalties do apply. Fees may reduce earnings on the account. Any monthly withdrawals or transfers reduce earnings. Hello, it is Ryan, and I was on a flight the other day playing one of my favorite social spin slot games on ChumbaCasino.com. I looked over the person sitting next to me, and you know what they were doing? They were also playing Chumba Casino. Coincidence? I think not. Everybody's loving having fun with it. Chumba Casino is home to hundreds of casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere, even at 30,000 feet. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com to claim your free welcome bonus. That's ChumbaCasino.com and live the Chumba life. No purchase necessary. VGW. Void. we prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. And to say exactly what her job was at the time. So through her keen interest in antiquities, she met and befriended many famous Egyptian, uh, Egyptianologists of the era. Seti made such significant contribution to Hassan's work that upon his death, she was employed by Ahmad Fakhri. During his excavations in Dashur, Hassan's magnum opus, the 10th volume, Excavations at Giza give special mention with sincere gratitude to Dorothy for her editing, drawing, indexing, proof, proofreading work. She learned from the scholars the techniques of archaeology. While they benefited from her expertise in hieroglyphs and drawings, right? So she became a key person to decipher a lot of these, to help decipher a lot of these hieroglyphs. And during this time, she prayed, made frequent offerings to the gods of ancient Egypt. She would often spend nights in the Great Pyramid. Dorothy became an object of the the village gossip. She would make night prayers and offerings to Horus at the Great Sphinx. Yet, she was respected by the villagers for her honesty and not hiding her true faith in Egyptian gods. She was sensitive to the religious observance of others. She would fast with the Muslims, villagers at times of Ramadan. Then she would celebrate with Christians during Christmas. So later she moves to Abydos. March 3rd, 1956, the 52-year-old Amseti left to Abydos. She set up home Narbet Abydos, which sits the cradle of the mountain of the pagan, uh, the Pega, the Gap. The ancient Egyptians believed this mountain led to Amenti in the afterlife. And this is where she began to be called Amseti because. It was customary for the Egyptian villagers to refer to a mother by the name of her eldest child. Abydos had a special significance for her because it's where she believed Besrit had lived and served the temple of Seti. She made short pilgrimages to the site before and during she had demonstrated her knowledge of advanced knowledge. At one of these trips to the temple, the chief inspector from the antiquities department who knew about her claims decided to test her by asking her to stand in a particular wall painting in complete darkness. 
She was instructed to identify the base of her prior knowledge to the temple as a temple priestess. She completed the task successfully, even through the painting on locations that had not been published yet, right? So she proved them wrong. They didn't believe her of her past life. So she passed that test. For Dorothy, the Temple of Seti was a, was a place of peace and serenity where she was watched over by benevolent eyes of Egyptian gods. Amseti claimed that her past life of Besrit Temple had a garden where she first met Seti the First. Her descriptions of a young girl were not believed by her parents. But while she was living in Abydos, the garden was found where she said it would be found. Excavations uncovered a garden which matched her descriptions. So again, she does this again. How does she know? So later in years, he's already reached the age of 60 in 1964. I'm saying she was faced with retirement by the Antiquities Department. And it was advised to see, uh, seek part-time work over there in Cairo. Cairo. So she went to Cairo but only stayed one day before returning to Abydos. The Antiquities Department decided to make an exception to their retirement age rules and allowed her to continue to work at Abydos for another five years till she retired in 1969. She had a pension of $30 per month. She's supplemented by needlework and sold to friends and tourists who bought gifts, clothes, and food and reading materials from her. So she didn't live this elaborate lifestyle. Just plain and simple. She wasn't there to try to make a buck or to sell a book. She spoke of Ramses II, the son of Seti I, whom she always saw as a teenager, as Besrith. Just knew him, right? She regarded him in a common with other Egypt, uh, Egyptologists as the most slandered of all of the pharaohs because of biblically derived accounts of describing him as the pharaoh of oppression and the slaughter of baby boys. Traits which were contracted by contemporary records. Kenneth Kitchen, an expert in the period, considered a true ramicide. He said, there's a certain truth in her familiar approach and that she came to all sorts of perfectly sensible conclusions about the actual objective material of the city temple, right? So again, she's on point. Dorothy Omsetti. She once said, Death holds no terror for me. I just do my best to get through the judgment. I'm going to come before Osiris, 
will probably give me a few dirty looks because I've known I've committed some things I shouldn't have. Because the Muslims and Christians would not let let a heathen be buried in their graveyards. Amseti built her own underground tomb decorated with a false door. Through this door, Ka was believed to travel between the world and the next. And it was engraved with an offering prayer and confidence with ancient beliefs. The staff in Chicago House gave her an imitation Schwabi figurine to place in the tomb. On April 10th, 1981, she gave her away her last two cats. As her condition deteriorated. On April 15th, she received a letter from Olivia Robertson confirming that Amseti had been enrolled in the Fellowship of Isis. In her inner faith, spiritual movement focused on the goddess. On March 23rd, on April 21st, 1981, Amseti died in Abadeus. The local health authority refused to allow her to be buried in a tomb she constructed. She was interred in an unmarked grave facing west in the desert outside of the Coptic cemetery. In the early 1970s, shortly after Nassar's death, Amseti disclosed that she believed she knew the location of Nefertiti's tomb, but showed some reluctance in disclosing it because it's most, it, she says, it's a most unlikely place because Seti I did not like An- Ananakan for his attempt to suppress traditional Egyptians in religious practices. We don't want anything more of this family to be known, she says. She described the location of the tomb to being close to Tutankhamun's, which was the counter of then prevailing opinion that no more tombs would be found in the Valley of the Kings. So she refused to disclose burial place of Nefertiti. She was a very important person. Even today, they still cannot find her tomb. They say she disappeared. She had several daughters. Even her daughters disappeared. There's no more history on her. There was opinions on Dorothy. Carl Sagan considered Amseti as a lively, intelligent, dedicated woman who made real contributions to Egyptology. This is true whether her belief in reincarnation is fact or fantasy. He viewed such phenomena as being rooted in fear of death and the humankind has commonly sought reassurance in some form of afterlife. In 1987, 
A New York Times article described a biography of her as intriguing and convincing of modern case history of the belief in reincarnation. So this is the story of Dorothy Eady. Who endured not just the pain at three years old of being close to death or even in death. Scrutinized later in life because of what she knew. Now they asked Dorothy before she passed away. It's in an interview. I saw it. They asked her. Now, I know you were three when you died. Do you think that possibly when you died, the spirit of Besrith entered your body and came back. Do you believe that that is a possibility? And Dorothy says, yes. I believe that could be a possibility. I mean, her language changed right after that. She scrutinized in school because of everything... They, they didn't even want her in, in school. She was in a Christian uh, Catholic school up there when she was little, and they would send her home because they said it wasn't her language was not proper. So as she grew up, even as a 6-year-old, 12-year-old, 16-year-old, 27 year old learning and learning and learning about ancient Egypt saying one day I will live there one day I will be there and when she gets there she kisses the ground and says I'm home I'm home Because of this, she was still scrutinized in a sense, even though she helped with the hieroglyphs, the drawings, the paintings, deciphering, even in her death. She was scrutinized. Not that they didn't believe her. I believe that they just probably thought because of the time era and the time when she passed was two different things, right? In a sense, like you can't be this person because this person's been gone. So we can't bury you in their same ritual ways because we still don't know if you are Bethred, Dorothy, right? If you are Dorothy, you're British American, uh, I mean, a British uh, descent. But yet she did not want a Christian burial. She did not want a, a, Muslim, a Muslim burial. She just wanted to be buried like an Egyptian from the 12th century. Even though she didn't get it, she got pretty close. And she is there on her land. Is this another case? Of another life, a past life. 
reincarnation. Is this possible? I believe it may be possible. The human body is made of electrons, electricity in a sense, right? Put it to you this way. Let's just say when your soul leaves your body or the energy leaves your body, who's to say that your soul or your energy is not some kind of, let's just put it in modern terms, like an SD card or some kind of memory card, right? In other words, you can take that card out and put it into another computer and it's going to read out everything that you have on that card, right? So let's just say that energy goes into some another body. Who's to say that that body cannot read the memory that was implanted for that short amount of time or long periods of time? It's just something to think about. It's a possibility of the unknown, right? And this is what exactly what this story is. It's a very unknown because I don't think we'll ever figure this one out. It's a great story. If you have a chance, go back, read up on it. I'll add some links to it, to a few of her videos on this podcast. I thought it was a very, very interesting story. There's a lot of information there. This poor woman endured all this her whole life just to get to the end of the light, knowing that she still fulfilled her destiny. And yes, I believe she was far from home. She's home now. Hope you guys enjoyed this podcast. I really did. Great story, man. Great story. But I really appreciate each and every one of you. If you guys can share this podcast, if you really enjoyed it, subscribe, click a heart, whichever platform you're using, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Deezer, uh, it doesn't matter, Amazon, Everything that's out there, if you see Alien Strand Podcast on there, click a heart on there, follow, click a thumbs up on everything that you see there. If you go to Alien Strand Podcast uh, there on Facebook, please like, share, you know, we're on YouTube as well. We have a few videos there. Click a like and subscribe there as well. We really appreciate everything, you know, uh, everything, everything that comes in is great. You know, we're trying to just keep the information flowing. And, you know, we got this new studio, building it as we go. And I hope you really guys enjoy this content. It's been my pleasure being here today. And I really appreciate each and every one of you. So remember, keep your eyes in the sky. Keep your head in the books. Always read and get the information. As many articles as you can. Because knowledge is power, right? The more you know, the better it is, the better you look as well. So, you know, and that's what Alien Strand is about here as well. You know, we're sharing the information, not just of UFOs, but everything that happened, you know, in the past as well. You know, as far as this story as well. So it's a great story. I'm glad you guys stuck around. But until then, you guys have yourselves a good day. Have yourselves a good evening and have yourselves a good night. What's up, 
guys? This is Mike Beavers from The Theory, and you are listening to Alien Strand Podcast, the dopest UFO alien podcast out there. And if you want to find out about me, just go on YouTube and search UFOs over UFO or The Theory with Mike Beavers. Stay tuned, guys. Hello, it is Ryan, and I was on a flight the other day playing one of my favorite social spin slot games on ChumbaCasino.com. I looked over at the person sitting next to me, and you know what they were doing? They were also playing Chumba Casino. Coincidence? I think not. Everybody's loving having fun with it. Chumba Casino is home to hundreds of casino-style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere, even at 30,000 feet. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com to claim your free welcome bonus. That's ChumbaCasino.com and live the Chumba life. No purchase necessary. VTW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus.